conditions. Um, there are three different conditions for item 9.1. Uh, one for Hannah Chowdhury. Hannah Chowdhury is overseas at the moment, is going to join us online, is having problems, but there is somebody else that's called Hannah Leeper who is going to come uh, in, um, in our place. Second uh, deputation on the same item is from Wilson Chowdhury, Hannah's father. Uh, they asked that they could do it as two separate deputations, having initially asked for a deputation between them, so technically we we'll speak for 20 minutes. Uh, what Mr Orchard is going, is doing at the moment is speaking to, to people who are just about to join us. Um, and we'll find out how attempt to do here uh, is that Anna Leeper will speak first, so it will be at 10 minutes, uh, and for, for Hannah Leeper. Mr Chowdhury was going to do a separate deputation on the way, but what he's wanting to do is to do his deputation really back to back with Hannah's. The reason being, I understand Mr Chowdhury is probably going to take all the questions by Hannah Chowdhury, Vice Chairman of the UK RAC Campaign Group to Aberdeen City Council. So ladies and gentlemen, esteemed councillors and fellow residents of Aberdeen, I stand before you today as the Vice Chairman of the UK RAC Campaign Group, but most importantly of one of the many young homeowners in Torrey who now face a bleak and uncertain future because of the decisions being made by the council. Just four short months ago, I was filled with pride and hope as I became a homeowner for the first time. At 19 years old, I thought I was making a wise investment in my future and contributing to the community that I love. But that joy was short-lived. Only a few weeks after moving in, Aberdeen City Council announced that my home, along with many other owners in Torrey, was constructed using reinforced, autoclaved, aerated concrete. A material now known to be dangerously unstable, suddenly the roof over my head, the walls that were meant to protect me, became a source of anxiety and despair. The council pro process response to the crisis. The decision to offer only the current market value for our affected properties is nothing short of a betrayal. How can it be that in a time of crisis, the very institution we trust to safeguard our interests is now turning its back on us? This decision, which devalues our properties to reflect the presence of RAC, leaves us, with, leaves us with homes worth far less than we paid, pushing many of us into a state of negativity and financial ruin. For me and many young people like me, this is more than just a financial blow. I am now burdened with a mortgage on a home that is no longer safe to live in, alongside a mountain of student loans. The Council's approach forced us to bear the full brunt of this disaster alone. Without any meaningful support, it's a decision that will have long-lasting repercussions, not just for us individuals, but for the entire Tory community. Let me be clear. This is not just a personal grievance, it's a community crisis. 
The report being discussed today outlines a plan on acquire our properties at market value, a value that has plummeted because of RAC. This is not a fair valuation, it's a deeply flawed approach that ignores the devastation impact on our lives. The Council's promise to cover reasonable legal and professional costs and provide home loss and disturbance payments is insufficient when the very foundation of our lives, our homes, is being stripped away at a fraction of its worth. We, the residents of Torrey, are being asked to accept offers that reflect the diminishing value of our home post rack. This is not compensation, it is a surrender. The proposed rehoming programme is present, presented as a solution, but for many of us it's a forced migration from the homes we love, the community we are part of and the future we envisioned. Those who refuse these reasonable offers are threatened with legal actions, forcing us out of our homes against our will. This is a testament of a modern day Scottish clearance where residents are pushed out to make way for new developments. I want to remind this council of the warnings my father, Wilson Chowdhury, shared after his private meeting with Stephen Booth, Chief Officer, Cooperate Landlord. He foresaw, foresaw the council's intention to undervalue our homes, yet this information was not adequately communicated to the residents. Many of us completed surveys distributed by the council, unaware that our responses could be used to justify a voluntary agreement that significantly undervalued our properties. This lack of transparency has left us in an even more precautious position with many facing the prospects of accepting far less than our homes are worth, all because we were not fully informed. Aberdeen City Council has the knowledge, resources and the legal authority under Section 71 of the Housing Scotland Act 2006 to do more to offer real assistance and fair compensation, but instead the Council have chosen to take the path of least resistance, one that benefits the Council interest at the expense of its residents. This approach is not only unjust, it's inhumane. By pushing us into a corner, offering only a pittance for our properties, the council is effectively profiting from our misfortune, setting the stage for large new housing complexes to replace our homes. The impact of this decision will be catastrophic. Not only will it lead to an increase in homelessness in our community, but it will also tear apart the social fabric of our community. The long-term consequences on local businesses, schools and healthcare facilities will be severe. As the number of void properties increases, the risk of antisocial behaviour and vandalism grows, further destabilising the area. This is not the legacy that any council should want to leave behind. I urge you to look to the Clackmanshire Council, which have chosen a different path. One that values the well-being of its residents above all else by offering homeowners the pre-RAC announcement prices of their properties. Clackmanshire has set a pre precedent, precedent of her fairness and justice that Aberdeen should follow. This is the model of a council that truly serves its people rather than abandoning them in their honour hour of need. Today I am not just speaking for myself, I am speaking for all the residents of Torrey who feel betrayed, abandoned and voiceless. We are asking you, Aberdeen City Council, to reconsider your approach. You have the power to make this right. Use the full extent of your legal authority to protect your residents, to offer fair compensation and to provide genuine support in rehoming. The decision you make today will define the future of our community. I also call upon the Scottish Government to establish a national fund to support homeowners affected by RAC and to implement laws that will prevent similar housing failures in the future. The silence from both the UK and the Scottish Governments in response to our repeated pleas for help is deafening. We need action, not apathy. We need leadership, not neglect. I make this plea that you take this challenge to both governments. In closing, I invite everyone here to join us in our protest and to support our petition in the Scottish Parliament. We have already gathered over 800 signatures, but we need more. We need your voices, we need your support, your solidarity to ensure that no one is left behind in this crisis. Together, we can push for fairness and not just resolution. Thank you. Thank you.